Davina's allegation, not to be a second ever one. And it is so lovely to see so many of you uh, here. And for those of us who are not familiar with what an arrangation might be, uh, it is the presentation uh, of the exploration and practice and performance of the art form in the format of a solo debut, the first time by any uh, Bharatanatyam dancer. So it is a really sort of joyful uh, occasion. And the idea behind an arrangation, lots of people see it as a kind of graduation ceremony. And it really isn't. <coughs> the arrangation marks the beginning of the artist's foray deeper into the art. It just says that she's got enough competence, enough of a depth of understanding, and enough knowledge to take the exploration of the art further, to make it more meaningful. And this remarkable young lady has done that over the last 18 months. And I've seen her grow, and it's been absolutely joyful. And for me, the magic of the arrangatrum happens in the rehearsal room, where I've seen Naveena rehearsal after rehearsal, you know, with her really incredibly busy schedule, turning up with a smile, doing it again and again and again, in the hope that she will have something that is precious to share with all of you. And it really is. So thank you for coming here to encourage her, for enabling her to feel the love through your energies. So without any further ado, we will start the program. The program always begins uh, with an ode to Ganesha, who is the elephant-headed god, and the removal of obstacles. So the first sort of chant and song is always done to him. During this, Naveena will offer flowers to the deities, which you can see on the altar there. Naveena's thematic arangetram is themed around the Lord Muruga, who is the son of Shiva and Parvati. So we've decided to keep it in the family. We are family. And uh, we've got pieces on Muruga, the son, uh, Shakti, the mother, and Shiva, the father. So we decided just, you know, for sake of some artistic uh, exploration to have a theme uh, for this evening's performance. There will be children who will tell you about what each of the pieces Naveena is dancing is all about. Uh, but for the moment, I will just leave you to take in the very soulful uh, work of Ravi Shankar, whose music we will hear first during the Ganesha Vandana. Thank you and have a beautiful evening.
Namaste. Navina will commence her recital with a sparkling cordon in praise of Muruga. A cordon is a hymn, usually in praise of deity. It is a traditional invocatory item in Badanath and recital, sometimes played at the temples at dawn. In this cordon, Muruga, the young rare god, is described as the one who takes away all the troubles and worries of the devotees. The trial of material world melts away as we worship at his feet. He rides around the heavens on a beautiful peacock and a sight to behold to all the citizens of paradise. His powers are such that he can make the oceans part and the mountains crumble and is an eternal source of blessing and compassion to all those who surrender to him. In this golden, descriptive passages are interspersed into rhythmic footwork and a scintillating start to the concert. This Goldavum is composed by the Tandra Quartet in Gaudi Ragam or Chitusha Egatala or a four beat cycle. Thank you.
continues her recital with a Devi Shakta in praise of Murugan's mother, Shakti, the mother of all the world. A Shakta consists of descriptive verses and is the first foray of a dancer into the world of Abhinaya or expressive storytelling. In this beautiful Shakta, the mother goddess is described as the protector of the world, the shelter for all those who seek refuge in her, and the compassionate one who would do anything to take away the tears of her children. This piece tells the story of Kuchela, a very poor friend of Lord Krishna, who at the request of his wife went to Krishna to ask for help to alleviate his extreme poverty. He takes Krishna a very humble gift of hand-pounded rice, for which he begs his neighbours as he remembers it was his friend's favourite snack. When he sees his beloved Krishna, Kuchela is overjoyed at the reunion and treated with so much love that he can't bring himself to ask of anything. Krishna's wife, Rukmini, an incarnation of Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth, encourages Kuchela to give the gift of hand-pounded rice to Krishna. As Krishna eats and relishes the rice, with each mouthful, the mother goddess blesses Kuchela, thus increasing Kuchela's worldly wealth. When Krishna returns home, wondering how to tell his wife that he did not ask of anything for Krishna, he finds a mansion in the place where his hut stood, and his wife and children, whom he left destitute and starving, dressed in fine clothes and looking in fine health. This Devi Shaktam is composed by Madurai Murli Dharan in Raga Marika and Mishra Chapatalam, or a seven beat cycle. Thank you.
Uh, we now have a very short uh, break for a costume change. Uh, Charlotte Shivan, one of the very talented singers from our uh, group, is now going to sing a song for you. Thank you.
Novena starts the second part of her recital with Arlene, a Gavri Tindu in praise of Morla. The word Tindu is originally referred to a couplet or poem in Tamil set to a particular meter. Many of these couplets were set to fortunes so they could be sung with ease by the common man. Gavri Tindus are sung by devotees as they carry the Kavari, a decorated wooden structure for Lord Mordecai, typically up a hill to ease the strain and physical exhaustion resulting from the journey. Jindals are set to various rhythms and are indicative of their energy levels, excitement and exhaustion of a devotee during his travels. This song describes Mordecai as a beautiful god who stands on top of Palini Mountain, who kills demons, who is compassionate to his followers, who takes various forms to ensure the well-being of his devotees, who takes away all the negative energy, who is a consort of Vali, who rides a peacock and appears as a purifying flame. Arulilam is written by Peri Samit Bodhan and set to Sindhu Roti Ravan and Adi Dhanam. Thank you. Oh, my. 
talents of the group. I'm very lucky because I have lots of girls who sing and dance and uh, young Sharon is one of those. So for the next four minutes or so she's going to sing a very beautiful song and it actually abused me a little bit because she's actually singing a song that was a hit when I was a young girl and it, 
interests me to see that young people still sing these songs. And it is a very beautiful one. And although it sounds a little bit sad, it's actually very happy.
Lena continues her recital with a puddle, and Kamenaya Bass piece restores the dancer's skill and expresses storytelling. This puddle tells humorously of a rivalry between two women. The narrator, who used to be the favourite of Lord Mulligan, who now seems to have been replaced with what she would consider a cheaper but flashier model. The narrator, hearing all the gossip and rumours about herself, begging for money, letting herself go by putting on weight, being freely talked of in the marketplace, says to her friend, she will say all these things and she will say some more, but I don't blame her, I blame Mulligan. I see her painting her lips so she can be kissed by many. I've seen her up to all sorts of mischief in the cover of darkness. Just a few months ago, she was at my house begging to borrow my jewels and my sandals. But now, she lives in a mansion with many servants, the finer silk sandals and the finer silk mattresses. Her arms are covered with bangles. She wears enough necklaces to choke her neck and her earrings have so many gems that it makes her face drop. The lady who stood boldly in all kinds of shady places now even boasts of having bodyguards. So let her say whatever she wants. I don't blame her. I blame Mulaga. Adhul Sundaval in a Anekaman Sundaval is composed by Sundaram Ayer and Sauryashtra Blagam and Ali Khan. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you, thank you. Uh, I've lost my words really, my heart is so full. Uh, aren't they amazing, my girls? They just. It's, just, it's not very often I'm lost for words, but there we go. Um, in fact, if my friends would say I have too many words. But uh, now to the very easy part of the uh, program for, as far as Naveena is concerned, uh, we've got a little uh, certificate for her, uh, which is just a little token of appreciation uh, from us. And I would like to uh, invite my right hand man, Graham. Uh, who made these beautiful props, by the way. So. Ooh, woo! So, Marina, are you here? Mama. She was there at the beginning, uh, and that is going to be no end. So for me particularly, it is exceedingly meaningful uh, to have uh, Annie's response to this evening's uh, performance. So here we go. Namaste. Um, I could scribble some notes um, during the performance, because this has been such a joy because normally I see now from the back as I copy her. So it was so beautiful, you know, to to see you and look at you and your dancing was beautiful. Everyone can see that your dancing was beautiful. And um, I expected it to be technically sharp and it was. It was it was clean and sharp and focused and there was no dithering, there was no flurry of movements. It was absolutely beautiful. And it made me think of, um, years ago, somebody told me that when you're making a floral arrangement, you put your flowers in, but you don't, you have to let each flower be seen for what it was. And all your movements could have been a photograph or a stub 
structure in their own right. Mm. They were so beautiful and so um, so spaced between them. No flurry. I thought that was really beautiful. Um, it was sharp and it was clean, but it wasn't sterile. It was so full of communication and so many different things were communicated. I was blown away. It was so wonderful. I'm, I'm not sure quite how you did that, how <laughs> you communicated so well. It was like the balance and the combination of pure mathematics and philosophy. It really was. It was like geometry and poetry together. It, it, was, it was wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Um, it, there was also a good and beautiful balance of confidence and humility. You have to have confidence if you're going to perform so that the audience can relax and know that you know what you're doing. But there ha I think there has to be humility because this art is not yours. You are a fleeting participant, and it will be here long after we are all dead and gone. So you you communicated a humility and respect, which I thought was really beautiful. And I I, I wasn't looking for that. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about it before. But I thought, yeah, confidence and humility was beautiful. And I thought, how how have you done that? And I think maybe. Maybe not, but I think maybe discovering your art as a grown up or revisiting it as a grown up, there's a particular inner opportunity for expressing things that you can't express in words. I think that when you learn something as a child and you're embedded in it, that's wonderful, but to choose your art yourself. <coughs> As a grown up, I think maybe that's why we. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think poetry and geometry, um, technical skill and soul is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. that now probably wants to say a few things. Um, with, 
an incredible amount of self-doubt. Um, little ones and older ones, um, you can do this. Um, you can absolutely do this and you absolutely deserve to do something like this. Um, it doesn't really matter if you're perfect. Um, what does that mean anyway? Uh, being good is great. Um, so have a small or simple lean into the things that give you 10 out of 10 joy. Um, what matters is what it does to you and how it makes you feel. Um, and this is why I dance. Um, because now that I've grown up, yeah, art and identity are completely interlinked, I think. Um, okay, right, stop me this. Levels exponentially rising. <laughs> um, I dance because of my brother Nish. Um, you are my hero. Um, I really truly wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. I dance because of my parents. Aman Appa, you are the divine, and I adore you both. I dance because of my gurus, past and present. Rajyanti, I can't see you, but I hope you're here um, for making this completely beautiful and intricate art form accessible to me. And to Anne. Anne. <laughs> Thank you for being the right person who turned up at the right time. Um, when I talk to a lot of people about their thoughts when they're doing this, they talk about the right timing. Um, and my gosh, you came at the right time and you opened up another world for me. You inhabit all the traits of religion that I admire, and Bradenardium is better than you embodying it. So, thank you so much. Completely been a family affair from my Nadia Priya babies, um, comparing to my cousins, learning how to do sound and lighting overnight, um, <laughs> complete superstars, um, as an art teacher across the world, um, just being incredible. So, to all of you, um, my family and my friends and colleagues who have become amazing friends over the last couple of years. I dance because of you. Um, I really don't think you realise how grateful I am to have all of you within reach. And I, I speak for Amma, Appa and Anne too, which as well. If, if there's a stronger word for grateful, I, I'd be using it time and time again to describe your place in, in, in our lives. So thank you all. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. Um, lastly, I dance because of Jones. Um, I love we share. All joy, 10 out of 10, joy is in the act of remembering. And two and a half years ago, I promised that we would continue our journey of triumph and transformation. And I think we're still sticking to that motto. Okay, that was big. Okay, that's it now. Um, <laughs> Thank you, thank you a million times. I love you all.